you can also catch very particular exceptions. So maybe if we can see if this is an illegal argument exception, and what we'll need to do is change this again to something that will fail. So we'll set the age to 13. So it does throw. And then what we'll notice here is that all of a sudden our application is bombing, but we still have a try catch here. What happened? Well, the reason is, is because what we're at throwing down here is, a, is an exception. But what we're checking for is, an, is, a, is a much more granular level of exception. Here we're checking for illegal argument exception. We're checking, hey, the exception, we only want to catch this if it's an illegal argument exception. Otherwise, just let it blow up. So this is very useful if we're trying to make sure that inside maybe we have that custom exception again. So we have class, you know, invalid name or invalid age exception. And it's going to pass in a message. And what it is, is it's a, you know, it's an illegal argument exception. And we pass in a message there. So instead of throwing this regular exception, we're going to throw this one here. And we can see what happens here. And so, oh, looks like it caught the illegal argument exception. Well, why did it catch the illegal argument exception if it's an invalid age exception? Because the invalid age exception is an illegal argument exception. Now, if we were to change this to invalid, let's say invalid class exceptions, which is just a, an, a, a different exception from java.io, it's not gonna work because it's not gonna catch it. It's an invalid age exception. So a lot of times you may want to catch multiple exceptions at once. So you need to climb up the hierarchy of classes here. So the, the exception is subclasses are a form of code throw, throwable, excuse me, that indicates, etc. that things are throwable. So what you can do is just rely on just the default exception. So we can just delete this because it'll use Kotlin's type alias. And we can see here that the exceptions kind of all root up towards the top. And if we use just a high level exception like this, then what we can do is actually provide a when statement. When ex, we can say, is a legal argument exception. We can say print ln legal argument. And when is, we might want to say something like uh, invalid age. And we want to print something, print ln invalid age. And then anything else, we just want to say print ln else. Something else. Now, if we run this, we're going to see invalid age. So if I were to remove this, let me say index out of bounds exceptions. So index out of bounds exception, we're just using an abbreviation. And what we see is invalid age is still being thrown. So I'm gonna change this to just throw something else. We throw an illegal argument exception inside of the check age method. And then we're gonna see that it caught something else. So something else was caught down here. Now, a lot of times what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and rethrow that exception because you are not sure what's happening here. So you wanna just say, hey, you know what? Here is the example. Uh, we have the exceptions come in and when the exception is an illegal age exception, do this. When it's an index out of bounds exception, do something else. Otherwise, I don't know what to do with it. Just throw this. Maybe someone further up the stack will catch it. But these are the only two exceptions I know how to handle inside of this try catch block because maybe this is, will throw an illegal age exception and maybe some other call down here that you know we haven't specified yet will issue an index out of bounds exception. And at that point, you can then start catching and handling multiple exceptions inside of your Kotlin program or rethrow it with the stack trace accordingly. And then you'll get the whole stack trace uh, all the way upside the, of the call stack. So if it's further up, you'll get the call stack as well. And that's how you can catch multiple different exceptions in Kotlin.